Hello everybody and welcome to today's episode of the Chris Pritchard Cycling... Just cycling show really, isn't it? It's not really news at the minute because there is no news. We're going to be doing news once a week probably from now on uh, because very little's happening. Let's try and collate as much news as we can into a 10 plus minute package. But yeah, pretty much the news at the minute is everything's getting cancelled and a lot of people are having to spend some time indoors, which is why I'm making this video. If it hasn't happened to you already, it's probably gonna to happen to you in the next week or two weeks. You're gonna be put on either self-isolation, quarantine, lockdown, whatever you wanna call it. We're all gonna be housebound for the next couple of weeks, potentially months. Now, if like me, you were just starting to see the glimmer of spring heading in, you were hoping to get out on the bike, that's gone now. We're gonna be stuck indoors. But let me ask you a question. Are you even ready? To be indoors. I know a lot of people out there who watch this channel already will probably be indoor advocates, will probably spend a lot of time already through the winter indoors and they're ready just to carry on. But what happens if you're brand new to indoor training? What happens if you're one of those riders who spent the whole winter, whether it was snowing, windy, raining, whatever the weather, you were out there churning the miles? What happens if you're ready to start racing now? You've been preparing all winter and now you're ready to race and your race has been cancelled. What are you going to do? Well, never fear, because Pritch is here to save the day. First up in this video, I just want to talk briefly about what you need to get yourself set up with an indoor setup. The most basic of setups all the way through to something a bit more lavish. From then, I want to talk about what indoor platform potentially you might want to use depending on what type of rider you are, what type of riding you want to do. And then on top of that, just a couple of recommendations I suggest when it comes to your indoor setup. All right, so first up, we're a newbie, brand new to indoor training, what do we need? What are our basics? Well, first off, you need the most basic of turbo trainers, dumb trainers, turbo trainers, whatever you wanna call it, a wheel on trainer, which will allow you to ride your bike indoors. You can get them from Decathlon, anywhere between like 50, I've seen them as cheap as like, I'm sure I picked one up years ago for like 20 quid, but anywhere between 50 and 100 pound will get you a basic turbo trainer. From there, you need at least a speed sensor and a cadence sensor and then on top of that, all you're gonna need is that AN plus sensor, which will send information across to the software that you're using and using an algorithm, I don't know how it works exactly, give you an estimation of your watts, which then will transfer that into movement of your avatar on screen or the movement of the graph. Once you've got those, you're ready to go. Now, I'm not essential, but I would highly recommend getting a heart rate monitor. Heart rate monitor will just keep an eye on that well, obviously your heart rate, but what you'll start to develop is an idea of when you're working in a certain wattage, how, how high that heart rate should be. And you can start guesstimating exactly where it is. I can guess within probably a maximum of five heartbeats, exactly where my heartbeat is, depending how hard I'm working. And when I see it in that range, I know my body's working optimally. If I'm what I feel like is a heart rate of 170 and it's only 150, 160, then I know I'm fatigued. I know my body isn't working optimally, so it means it's time for a bit of a break off the bike. Or potentially I could be coming down with illness. If that heart rate's elevated, I'm doing a nice easy spin and it's up around 150, 160, then I know I'm coming down with something and it's time to get off the bike and go on rest, recuperate and get ready for getting fit again. So yeah, not essential, but definitely a, um, a cheap tool that will give you a lot more information about how you're feeling and how you're actually going. Now, taking it a step further from the basic dumb trainers, you've got smart trainers. Now, everything from here on out I'm gonna recommend is Wahoo. We have an affiliation with Wahoo. There's a link down in the description. If you ever want any Wahoo products, order it from that link down in the description. You'll order it direct from Wahoo. You'll be helping the channel out as well. So I'm, I'm a massive Wahoo fanboy. I've used a kicker for five years, never had any trouble with them. Absolutely love, in fact, Wahoo heart rate monitor, Wahoo Roam. Wahoo's brand new Lacol um, indoor kit. I mean, this is a little bit right side Fred, this, this sleeveless jersey. I don't know whether I'll wear, I'll wear that, but they've just started doing that. Speed sensor, element bolt. So you could say I'm an absolute fanboy when it comes to Wahoo, but with good reason, like all their products are absolutely brilliant. So at the value end of their range, let's call it, is the Kicker Snap, which is a wheel on smart trainer. So a smart trainer will talk to the software that you're using and it will give direct information of watts, of cadence, of all the relevant information that that software needs to be able to move that avatar more efficiently and more accurately than just speed and cadence sensors. 
So that's your basic one. It costs around £400, slightly more than £400, but it, it gives you a much more realistic feel to your training, a much more accurate reading to your training if you're just using a dumb trainer. Stepping up from that, you've got your direct drive, which is the Kicker Core. That's around £700. Now you're getting into a little more of, of that expensive territory. But listen, hey, you get what you pay for. The Kicker Core is one of the best smart trainers, value for money, absolutely end of. I don't care who I'm talking to. I'll argue that till, till the cows come home. It's one of the best trainers ever, all right? And then top of the range smart trainer, you've got the Wahoo Kicker, all singing, all dancing, does pretty much rides the bike for you. Well, it doesn't, but you get what I mean. It's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely silent in terms of noise. It's just a high quality, well-built, Listen, this is not an advert. I'm just saying, I'm just giving you the options. So there's something there for everybody. You've got your basic turbo trainer, dumb trainer, right at the bottom end, between 50 and 100 pounds. Then take it a step up. You've got that kicker snap, which is still a wheel on. Smart trainer, around 400 pounds, 700 pounds is going to get you that kicker core. Then 1,000 pounds is going to get you that Wahoo kicker. There are obviously other makes and models of smart trainers. They're the ones that I suggest because I bloody love Wahoo. So once you've got all that, you're ready to go. But what software do you use? Where do you go? All right, so you've got your turbo trainer set up, you're on your bike, you're riding away, you're sick of staring at that wall. Riding alone in the shed isn't character building. It's a one-way ticket to the loony bin. Look at me, I'm Bradley Wiggins. <laughs> sick of watching the same films over and over again on your phone. You want some more entertainment. You want some more visual stimulus. You might want specific training programs. Well, if you're brand new to indoor training and you want some software to use, I'd highly recommend going to Zwift. You've probably seen the adverts. You've probably seen the pros using it. It seems to be everywhere at the minute and with good reason. It is a really good product, especially for brand new riders to it. The UI is, is simple to use. Even I can get set up within a couple of minutes on Zwift. It's easy to link your sensors, it's easy to link your turbo trainer or your smart trainer and get riding. But once you're riding, what can you expect from it? Well, there's always going to be somebody to ride with. Zwift has the biggest user base of all platforms across the, the indoor cycling software network. And at any one point, especially during the winter, you can see up to 12,000 people riding on Zwift at the same time. So there's always going to be somebody to ride with. So if you want that community feel, if you want to feel like you're actually interacting with people, again, Zwift is the place to go. There's plenty of routes, there's plenty of roads, there's two different worlds to choose from each and every day. So you could be riding London one day, Yorkshire the following day, Innsbruck, there's loads. We're not going too deep into it, but I would highly suggest that if you are brand new to it and you just want to experience it for the first time, then Zwift is the way to go. You get a seven day free trial. After that, it's around £12 or $15 a month. I mean, in terms of the price, it's, it's comparable to everything else. You do get a lot for your money when it comes to Zwift. Next up, and if you're a rider who solely wants to see numbers, who just wants to stare at that graph and is anal about hitting those target watts, then I highly suggest two platforms, Trainer Road or Sufferfest. I was a massive advocate of Trainer Road last year. I used it to help me get back on the track to race at the British National Masters. It's a great training tool. If you solely just want to see numbers and you want to see graphs, then Trainer Road is the way to go. However, when it comes to price, I think Trainer Road, they're pricing themselves too high. I'm sure they'll say, well, they say on the website, the best value in cycling training. If you get a monthly subscription, it's just under $20. If you get billed annually, $189 a year, there's cheaper training platforms out there. And one platform you can use for $60 less than Trainer Road, or $5 a month less than Trainer Road, is Sufferfest. Now, Sufferfest is only something I've recently been using in the past couple of months, really. Obviously, Wahoo bought Sufferfest out, being part of the Wahoo family. I wanted to get involved and try it out. And I've got to say, my first thought when I saw this come out a few years ago was it's just a gimmick. So during the workouts here, you've got obviously the workout at the bottom of the screen telling you what wattage to hit, the rate of perceived exertion you should be pushing yourself to, everything, all the information you need, just like Trainer Road. But on top of that, you've got footage from various different races throughout the years to give you that inspiration, to give you that motivation, to keep you inspired, to keep you driving, to keep you pushing hard, to try and make you feel like you're part of that race. And like I said, I thought it was a gimmick. However, once you're in there, once you're in the zone, once you're training, 
those videos can really pull more energy, more effort out of you just simply by watching them. It's quite inspiring, especially as someone who, who races quite a bit or, or used to race quite a bit. It is fun to think that, that you're part of that, watching those guys attack right, bang, get yourself in the saddle. And you, you kind of miss that with Trainer Road. And I'm sure Trainer Road will just say it takes away from the focus of the effort, but I really believe that it enhances the experience of, of training, takes away that edge of boredom that someone like me can, can easily get. But not only that, Sufferfest also offers a more holistic approach when it comes to your training. So not only are they offering cycling training, they're also doing strength workouts so you can increase core strength, you can increase leg strength, you can get yourself bike fit off the bike. So when you get back out on the bike and you're outside again, you're gonna be as strong as an ox. Not only that, they do yoga workouts as well. So you can reduce the risk of injury. You can make sure those muscles are kept pliable, flexible, injury free as long as you can. And it's nice and relaxing. So not only do you get all that for the physiological side of your training, but you also get mental preparation and mental training through Sufferfest, allowing you to set goals, allowing you to, to work on that mental strength, to be able to push yourself through workouts while you're in races. And it's gonna set you up to maintain that really healthy mind that you need when it comes to training really, really hard. So $14.99 a month or $129 a year for Sufferfest. So the pricing of the Sufferfest is a lot cheaper than Trainer Road and they also offer a 14 day free trial. There potentially, in the next couple of days, maybe some news coming out from Sufferfest um, to assist with people who are locked up, who are stuck indoors. Um, I can't say any more than that, but just keep an eye out on Sufferfest. Next up, and you might be one of those riders, like I said at the start, you rode in winter, during the snow, during the gale force winds, during Storm Dennis and Storm Tracy, and you were just out there. You just bloody love being out there on the roads. But the Prime Minister or the President has said to you, no, you're going nowhere. You're stuck indoors, stay there, suck it up. But you want to feel like you're outdoors. You want to experience the outdoors. Well, the software I suggest for that is Ruby. Now, Ruby is something Listen, I'm not well versed in this one. I just, I just, I, I use other training platforms. It's as simple as that, but I have tested it. I have tried it. And I think for someone who wants to still feel that experience of being out on the open road, then this is the way to go. You can pick from various different routes. I went on there this morning. I picked a route in the Peak District, got on my bike and I rode through the Peak District. It was as close as I was gonna get to being out on the road. On top of that, you've got that augmented reality, so you've got riders in front of you, pacing you, racing against you. So it really gives th that feeling of, of riding with someone, although just avatars. It's nice to, nice to be able to chase people and it's nice to be able to feel that you are, you are kind of riding within a group, even though they're just augmented reality. It's not the best of graphics, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's just an addition to it. I mean, I could happily ride without the augmented reality of the riders there and just ride along the roads. I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna ride an American road or, or an English road or wherever it might be in the world, you can probably go and find one on Ruby and then you can just download that, boom, get riding. How it works is obviously your smart trainer or, or your, your sensors linked up to Ruby. The faster you go, the harder you pedal, the faster that camera is gonna move through that world and obviously the slower you go, the camera's gonna slow down and it just takes you through the route, whichever one you've selected. I think it's a, it's a great way of, of experiencing the outdoors indoors. So Ruby offer a 14 day free trial, then it's only $10 a month. And that's for a family account with unlimited profiles. What you tend to find on other platforms is there's, you're limited to, to one profile. Uh, over on Zwift, under 16s are free but if you and your spouse want to ride Zwift, then you both have to create separate accounts. Here with Ruby, you can have as many accounts as you want for that $10 a month. So Ruby has a lot of pros and cons. I need to spend a bit more time on it to actually give my, my full opinion on it. And I don't think I will compared to the other platforms, but I can see the value in riding those real roads, feeling like you're out there, experiencing new roads that you potentially may never get to ride. I mean, the fact that I can jump on, on the bike and be in the Peak District in a couple of clicks is, is quite exciting for me. However, there are better platforms for, for what I want to do whilst indoor training. Ruby's a great option. It's a cheap option and there's 14 days free as well. 
In fact, let me know down in the comments below, are you a Ruby user? Have you used it before? And can you recommend it over any other indoor training platform? Leave your comments down below. And last but not least is the rider who's been training all winter, who's been chomping at the bit to get some competition, who's been hitting those intervals, increasing that speed, increasing that power, ready to go racing, only to be told there's gonna be no racing for the foreseeable future, potentially for the whole bloody year. So what do they do? They've got all that pent up emotion, all that pent up anger, ready to unleash it on the world, ready to show the world how fast they are. Where are they gonna go? Well, I'd highly suggest they go to CV Arcade. We'll get on to CV Arcade in a minute, but a lot of people will probably think Zwift Racing is the way to go. And Zwift have pretty much got racing sorted out as good as they can on that platform. Back in 2015 and 16, it was like the bloody Wild West when it came to racing. It's much more organized, much more structured now. However, because of the, the, the lack of physics or the lack of real world physics, when it comes to Zwift. Racing tends to be just a mashing of the pedals, one massive blob making its way to the line before the finish. What you don't tend to see happen is riders making breaks, getting out there in front, putting big leads into the group of riders or the peloton of riders only to be brought back like you'd see in real world racing. It doesn't kind of happen like that. It's literally just as long as you're in the blob, there's a good chance you're going to be there at the finish. That's just the way the, the, the physics are on Zwift and they certainly need working. But if you want a good workout, if you want to feel like you're racing and compete against people, then, then Zwift is the way to go. We're not even going to start on the potential of people cheating. Just go in there with an open mind. Expect to get your ass kicked. You'll enjoy it. Trust me, you'll enjoy it. It's, it's, it's good fun. However, on the other end of the spectrum, you've got CV Arcade. Now this game, and it is a game, it requires skill, ability, tactics, strength. It requires everything that you need in a real world race, but on an indoor platform. So CV Arcade requires the rider to not only be able to mash the pedals and produce good wattage to actually win a race, but you need your tactics. There's steering involved, there's braking involved, there's a myriad, I think that's the right word, of power-ups to be used in this. There's also the effect of wind, which causes the riders to have to adjust their tactics, adjust their positioning to make sure that they stay out of that wind as much as possible. And when you're in a group, you feel the change in that resistance. You feel it become easier. You see how much of a draft you're actually picking up from these riders in front of you, and it allows you to take it a little bit easier. Compare that to Zwift, where technically you are in the draft, you're still pushing out big watts just to stay there. Over on CV Arcade, you've got that feeling of easing on the pedals. You can feel that resistance change when you're protected out of the wind. And it just makes it, makes it feel a lot more like real world racing. Now, CV Arcade still has cons. I'm not saying it's the be all and end all. I'm not saying it's the, the best thing since sliced bread. It's still got a, a lot of work to do to be the, the finished final product that it wants to be. But while it's still in beta, I think it is a highly usable platform. It's great for racing. The, the, the sense of achievement and of accomplishment of getting through a CV Arcade race is, is tenfold compared to anything else. And if you actually win one, you feel like you've achieved something because you've outwitted your opponent, you've outpowered your opponent, you've, you've out-tacticked your opponents by using your power-ups at the right time. And there's a great sense of achievement in, in doing so. And don't forget over on CV Arcade, you've got big prize purses, for those races that are going off. Currently at the minute, I'm, I'm involved in the CVR World Cup and I think the prize pot is around 30 grand, I think, something like that. So we're, we're riding and racing for real money and it, it makes a difference. I'll tell you that for nothing, it makes a bloody difference. And one thing that CVRK does that nobody else does is it's completely free to play. If you wanna enter the CVR World Cups, there's a small entry fee, but the chances are you're gonna win that back in prize money, even if you finish last in every single race. But if you don't get involved in the CVR World Cup races, then it's free to play. That's value for money. And of course, there are other platforms out there to use. Veloton is on its way eventually at some point. That could be a massive game changer. Rogue Grand Tours is currently out. A lot of people are using that at the minute. A lot of people like that. Kino Map, be cool. But let me know your thoughts down below. What's your favorite platform to ride? Why is it your favorite platform to ride? What would you recommend 
a brand new indoor cyclist who's stuck indoors for the first time to ride? What would you suggest? Leave your comments down below. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you my setup, weren't I? All right, so here it is, here's my setup. So right at the back there, obviously Wahoo Kicker, Kicker Mat, then we've got the Kicker Climb at the front. So the climb will replicate a hill or a descent on whichever software you're using. So when you start going up the hill, that's automatically gonna start going up. And then when you go down a hill, it obviously comes down and then there, that thing is by far the best value for money when it comes to anything when it comes to training indoors. If you don't have any software at all, you need a kicker headwind. By far the best fan you will get the only fan that will actually keep you cool during a very hot, very intense workout. So yeah, that's my that's my setup. It's pretty basic. And then I have my um, whatever software I'm using there. So, I mean, it's basic in terms of minimalist. This stuff is not basic. This is this is high end stuff. And I'm I'm very lucky and fortunate to be in a position to have a relationship with Wahoo that allow me to to have all this. So make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you've not done already. And if there's any more information you want on indoor training, leave your comments down below. Let's try and get the community to help as many people as we can to get indoors, get riding until the government say otherwise.